everyone, it's Carly Hall and today is the second part of the Cricut Mug Press series on how to design and create mugs using your Cricut Mug Press. Today we will be making a sublimation design that I will print with a sublimation printer. If you haven't seen my converting a sublimation printer video, you can check that out. I will put a link in the video description. All right, so I am using Silhouette Studio today. This is a free software. I will put a link in the description. I'm using the free version. So nothing about this costs money and you don't have to worry about not having a Silhouette or even a Cricut machine. This tutorial will work with without a machine, a cutting machine at all. So all you need is this design software, which is free. Again, I'll put a link for the free version in the description. And then you need a sublima sublimation printer and I converted an Epson printer. So I'll put bo both of those links in the video description so you can check them out. To get started, I have two different mug templates and I actually referenced the templates in Cricut Design Space. So I found that the 11 ounce mug, the dimensions are 8.75 by 3.79 and then the 15 ounce mugs are 8.75 by 4.725. So those are just some guides that I decided to create. And then I used the lines on Cricut Design Space to find the center and then to mark the sides of the center of the mug. So I'll give you some rough dimensions here. But from the center line to that line, it's 2.581. So you can see that that measurement will be the same from both sides here. And then it'll be a little bit smaller on these edges that wrap the mug. And this will be, make a little bit more sense when you see the mug, but you can see that this is just 1.8. So I created this template and you can make your own template, but really you just need to know the outside rectangle, 8.75 by 3.79. Now we're going to get started. We're making this design up here, this cute text file with some photos in it, and I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So using the template, we are going to start by using our text tool in Silhouette Studio, clicking on the A icon on the very left, and then clicking anywhere on our working area, and we'll just type out the word we want it to say. So it can say BFF, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whatever you want it to say. The font I'm using is Dixie Type Co. Sunny Beaches, so I'm just gonna type in DTC, Sunny Beaches, and I will link to that. I thought it was a really good thick font. We're actually gonna offset it a little bit just so you can see. But I wanted a font, let me change the color here so you can actually see what's going on. I wanted a font that was really chunky so that um, a lot of my image would show through when I put my image in there. So we're gonna start with the word. So over here, there's this panel. It's called the offset panel. It's a star. If you can't find it, you can go to panels and then drop down to offset. And I'm going to offset this just a little bit. And you can see that you can just make it a little bit chunkier. So I'm going to make this an offset at 0.125, but you can scale this to offset it as much or as little as you want. Actually, I think I might do a little bit less, maybe 0.1. And then you could round the corners, you can make them a little bit sharper, whatever you want to make it look like. Then we're gonna click apply. If we move this offset layer, you can see that this one is a lot more bubbly, which is what I want. So I'm going to delete that original one. I'm going to stick with this chunky one. Now I know that I wanna put the O as a heart, so I'm going to drag my M's up onto my template so that they're centered on the sides of my mug. So that's the side of my mug and the center mark. So I'm going to align those roughly in the center. Then I'm going to open my library and find a heart. You can use any heart that you want or you can import a heart, but I have some hearts in the library. So I'm just going to double click on one of those and ungroup this. Don't need the arrow part. We're going to use this heart as the O. You could leave the other O and that would work just fine, but I just thought the heart was cute to add a little bit. And then we can resize our letters as big or as small as you want. So really you can make them the exact look that you're going for. I'm going to delete this one and take 
this one so that I know they're the exact same size because I resized those at different times. So once you're happy with the sizing, now I'm going to use the align tools. So here's my M, my O, and my other M. And up at the top, there's these spacing tools and align tools. So this one will space them horizontally so that they're equal. So you can see it just shifted the heart ever so slightly over. And then while everything is selected, I'm just going to bring it to the center of my template. Okay, I don't actually need this template anymore, but I'm going to leave it because um, we're going to use it in a little bit. So I'm just going to move it out of the way so it doesn't confuse us. So I'm just going to drop that down. And then now we can add our images to our letters. There's a few ways that you can do this. A lot of people will teach you to crop, but I actually like using the photo as a fill pattern because then you can adjust it. So I have my images on my desktop, just saved on there, and I'm going to drag them into the letters. So when I have it outside, nice and big picture of me and my mom, and when you drag it inside, it will fill whatever you're holding it over. So we will adjust them. But I'm just going to position everything so that they're in the correct letter. So again, just dragging and positioning them, positioning them inside of my letters. Now that I have everything inside my letters, I can adjust them. So we're going to click on the letter and over on panels, we're going to go to fill color. The fill color panel will open up. It's this art palette here and we'll want to click on the dots. This picture is seen as a fill pattern. So we can adjust this fill pattern. We can do a couple of things. We can scale it. So I can scale it and I can pan it so that my mom and I are over here, right in the center, wherever I want us to be. I think I'm going to put us over here so that we have the flower showing. I'm gonna scale it down just a little bit so that her face isn't getting chopped off. Then we have some greenery coming in over on the side, which is nice. This one looks pretty good, so we can just scale it so that she's not getting cut off as much. Scoot it over a little bit so that we're both centered in there. And this last one, we can also pan it over so that we can see her a little bit better and then scale it. So you can see I am able to adjust and scale my pattern so quickly and easily. If I wanted the same image all the way across, so say I wanted this mom image to be all the same photo and the picture to go across the entire image, all I would do is right click while everything is selected and choose group. So now when I drag my photo in, you can see that it replicates it all the way across. And then if I wanted to, that's one way to do it. If I wanted to have the picture span all the way across, I'm going to make this a compound path and drag this guy over. And by making it a compound path, it will expand the length of all three with the same image as opposed to replicating it. So let me do that one more time. Move this out of the way. Okay, so this is one option here. I'm gonna make a copy, oops. And I'm going to take out the pictures so that we start over. All right, so if I wanted the same picture replicated over and over, we're going to group them together. So right click and group. Then I can take my photo and drop it in and I'll put the same photo in each one. If I wanted the same photo to span the entire distance, I can make it a compound path. So all I did was right click and choose make compound path and now that tells Silhouette Studio that this image is a collection of images that works together. And so when I drop it in, now our picture goes all the way across. So just some fun options that you can play with and get creative with your mugs. So after you have all your pictures set, I want there to be a outline. So up at the top in the very left, I have this outline option. And I was playing around with colors. I'm not sure what I'll do yet, but we'll just choose this violet color, and then you can change the point size so that you can actually see it. And you can make that as thick or as thin as you want, but you can see it just gives it a little bit of dimension. And you can add so many effects. This is, you're not just limited to just a color, but I'm going to keep this tutorial simple for um, time's sake. So once you're happy, I'm going to group all of these together. 
so that they stay together. And then using my template, we'll just make sure that my heart is lined up in the center again. And we're going to highlight everything. And you'll have to let me know if you want this template to be downloadable if you, if you need it or if you can manage to make this on your own with the shapes and the lines. Um, since I know all mugs are a little bit different, I'm using the Cricut um, mugs with their Cricut recommended dimensions, but I wasn't sure if that would be helpful to have. So you have to let me know, know in the comments. I will put the dimensions though, so you have a good idea of where to put your lines. Using the align tools again, I'm just going to center everything up to the image. So this center, you'll see that it just centers my mom to the rectangle, which is what I want. Since I'm printing this on sublimation paper, I don't want these lines to print, but I do want some type of guide to be able to cut down my sublimation paper. So instead of printing lines, I'm going to create little cross hatches. And to do that, I'm just going to draw a line straight down. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of a buffer so that I don't cut too close. And we'll make this a darker color and I increase the point size so it actually prints and we'll do 0.5. So then I can have this cross hatch and I'm going to make a copy and rotate it so that I can put another one on the other side. And they don't have to be perfect. These are just guides for us so that we know where we're cutting. I'll put this space it exactly the same so that I know to cut on those lines and then we'll group these two together. Zoom out just a bit, make a copy and we'll do it on the other side. Just rotate those all the way around. And we just need two of them so that I have two guides so that I know where to cut with my paper trimmer. All right, you can put them exactly on the lines, but like I said, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a buffer. Now that I'm done with this guide, I can delete that. And when I print it out, I'll just trim it on this line, this line, this line, and this line, which hopefully will make a little bit more sense. The last thing we need to do, just in case I don't, I don't wanna move everything around, so I'm just going to group it all together. To group everything together, you'll just hover your cursor over everything, and then you can right click and group or on the keyboard, I just use my hotkeys command G. So that groups everything together. So now when I move it around, it'll stay together. The last thing we need to do before we print is we do need to mirror it. So up at the top, object, mirror, and then flip horizontally. We just wanna get in the habit of mirroring everything. All right, we're ready to print. Before we print, let's set up our page, make sure everything looks good to go. So I have, on the right hand side, this document page setup panel. We're gonna click on that. And then the media size, I'm printing on letter size sublimation printer paper. So we'll wanna make sure that we have letter size paper selected and you can see that mine is landscape orientation. I could actually print out two images on here. So I could double them up and print out two if I scoot them out far enough. So you can fit two, I only need to print one, so I'm just going to print one. All right, so everything looks good, and now we can print this out. So we are going to click File, and then Print. And again, you don't need a cutting machine. Now you'll see that there's the incorrect orientation on my page. So I need to make sure that my orientation is set up correctly. So I'm going to click Settings, and then I'm going to change my orientation to landscape like I have showing here. So when that changes, you can see that now I'm at the correct orientation. My hatch marks are pretty close to where my printer will allow me to print. So you'll just wanna make sure that your little marks are all within this outside border. And if everything is inside, then you're good to go. You'll wanna click print. It won't start printing yet. It will open up this dialog box where you can adjust your settings. So I'm going to make sure that my media is photo map paper, that's my favorite setting, and that will boost it up to best. And then I'll print this out on my sublimation printer. All right, so here's my image, it just printed out. While we're prepping our mug, I'm going to power on the mug press so that it starts heating up. So I just clicked on the power button 
and that will start heating it up. So I'll leave that off to the side while we're prepping the mug. And then for my image, I'm going to use these marks to trim down my design. So again, I just wanna shave them off just a little bit so that I don't accidentally transfer that cross onto my mug. So I just cut off the edge so that the ink is completely off. And then I'll cut this side and just repeat all the way around my edges. So you can see that those lines make it really easy to trim it down back to my template size. So this template should fit around the mug since I used the dimensions from Cricut. To prep the mug, I'm using the Cricut mugs. In future tutorials, I will be testing out sublimation mugs with my new mug press, but for this tutorial, I wanted to stick with the Cricut mugs since the last tutorial I did was infusible ink on the Cricut mug. And Cricut recommends using a lint roller. I got a couple of questions about using alcohol wipes, and I typically prep my mugs with alcohol, but I actually was surprised that I did like using the lint roller. So I'm gonna lint roll this one and just go over it and then we'll tape on our image. So once the mug is clean, you can actually see there was a little bit of debris, not, not too much, but enough to where I can see it. We're going to tape on our design. So this wrap should wrap around our mug and fit, which it does. So you can see that it is, the M's are centered on both sides. The O is centered, or the heart rather, is right down the middle. So that worked great. So I have heat resistant tape. I will put a link in the description. This is the Cricut brand and it's just in a tape dispenser. So I'm going to hold my mug and position my image so that it is equal on both sides. I'll get some tape ready. So we'll position this so that it's equal on both sides. And then I'm just going to tape it on. Double check that it's equal. So I have like a pinky and a pinky on both sides. So that's pretty good. And then when you're wrapping it, you want your image to be really, really tight along your cup. So I just have it pressed as tight as I can. And the bottom of my image, you'll want it to follow the bottom of your mug. I'll just tape that a little bit extra. So that it's nice and secure. If you want to go around the top on my infusible ink tutorial, I went around the entire top because I was worried that the ink would come out the top. But since my image is only in the middle portion, I'm not too concerned about the ink coming out of the top and the bottom, but we will wrap butcher paper around the entire mug. I used the template in Design Space and I just cut some butcher paper. And I'm going to use three sheets because that's what they recommend with the infusible ink pens and markers. And then these sheets will wrap perfectly around the mug so that they won't get burnt. So, and that was kind of like an extra step you can just fold butcher paper, but I thought it'd be really nice to have my butcher paper fit perfectly around my mug. So I'm just going to tape that on there so it's nice and secure. And it's pretty tight. I may actually tighten that up just a little bit. So I'm going to do one side and then pull the other side so that it's nice and tight. And the butcher paper will prevent any ink from going through the sublimation paper onto my mug press. So the sublimation paper I'm using is a sub, um, so it shouldn't have too much blowout, but just in case, I have three sheets of butcher paper. Now the settings with the Cricut Easy Press are just in there, so I don't know how much time this will take or what the temperature of the press is. So we'll just put it in. You're going to drop your mug in and hold it by the handle. And then you'll close it in with the lever, just making sure that your image is completely covered. And then it will start. And then we'll just sit and wait. And then once it comes out, I have an easy press mat 
with a sheet of butcher paper on top so that we can place our mug and let it cool down. So don't walk away from your mug press. Obviously it's hot. You don't want to forget about it. It does have an auto shut off feature, but I definitely recommend just waiting around until your mug is ready. And then once it's ready, we'll pop it out and let it cool off. All right, so the timer just went off. We'll pull out the mug and then we will just let it cool off for about 10 to 20 minutes. So I'll power this off and then I will meet you back here. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. It's definitely still warm. So I would say probably wait the full 20 minutes so that it's not going to burn you. But I'm impatient just like I was in my last video. So I'm going to peel this off. We'll start with our butcher paper. So on the butcher paper, you can see that the first sheet has a ton of blowout. The second one has just a little bit of ink and the third one has nothing. And that's what I wanna see. I wanna see nothing on the third sheet because then I know that my press is completely protected and it won't have any ink on it that will transfer to future projects. So three sheets seems to do the trick. And I really did like cutting these to the size. So I do recommend that. You can also just trim them with a paper cutter, but I did like the tabs. It was really easy to put those on my mug. And then for the design, we'll peel off our tape. Again, you do need heat resistant tape. You don't wanna just use masking tape or scotch tape. And then we'll reveal our adorable image. It is so cute. It turned out even more vibrant than I could have imagined. So you can see just how bright and clear it is and how clear my printer is. So they really, there's no blur. Everything is super clear and crisp. As a reminder, these mugs from Cricut, if you use sublimation ink or infusible ink, they are 100% dishwasher safe and microwave safe. So this can go into your microwave, into your dishwasher, and your image will not fade or peel off. It's completely in there, permanent on there. So really cute, easy project. I'm so impressed with my sublimation printer. Again, I will link to my printer, how to convert it, the ink that I use. I will be doing comparisons on some ink. And again, this is sublimation paper. The settings, I was concerned about not being able to control the settings. There's still a little bit of ink left on here, but that's normal for sublimation paper. And you can see that it did transfer just like it looks on my computer. So it does transfer darker than what it looks like when you print it. So if you rewind this video, the print is really dull. It looks really faded, but when you transfer it, it does get a lot brighter. So that's something to note. It's not nothing's wrong with your printer when you print it out. It will be a lot lighter. And then when you transfer it on, it will look so clear and so vibrant. That template worked perfectly. I'm so impressed. So yeah, final wrap up on this. The settings for the mug press, I didn't have to tweak them at all. Everything transferred really well. I'm so impressed with how well that worked. So if you have questions, the next tutorial that I want to do, there's several, but one of them is testing sublimation mug blanks with the Cricut Easy Press since I have been using just the Cricut mugs, which work great. So I will be testing some sublimation mug blanks that I can find. So if you have ones that you want me to test, put those in the comments. And then in the future, we'll also test out different sublimation ink, which I'm excited to try too. All right, I think that's everything. Everything will be linked in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. I love this tutorial because you don't even need a cutting machine. All right, leave those questions and comments below and I will get back to you. And thank you so much for being here. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. All right, I'll see you in the next video.